Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear students, in this session we will be studying Government of India Act. Government of India Act 1909. It otherwise came into known as Window Morley Reforms. Window Morley reforms. Since during the passage of the Government of India Act, Mindo was the Viceroy. Morley was the Secretary of State for India. Secretary of State for India. That is why the Government of India Act 1909 came into known as Mindo Morley Reforms because Mindo was then the Viceroy, Morley was the Secretary of State for India during the passage of the Government of India Act. First of all, we will be looking into the circumstances behind the passage of the Government of India Act 1909. What were the circumstances <laughs> behind the passage of the Government of India Act? 1. The number of matriculates the number of matriculates increase it from 1286 in 1885. In 1885, the number of matriculates in India was 1286. The number increased to 8211 in 1906. We can see the similar trend in the publication of newspapers, journals and periodicals. The first reason behind the passage of the Government of India Act or Mindo Morley reforms was that the number of matriculates increased from 1286 in 1885 to 8211 in 1906. Secondly, the number of newspapers, journals, weeklies increased. What do you mean from the increasing number of matriculates or newspapers or wider publication of journals and weeklies? From this, we come across with the fact that the number of persons knowing the rights of citizens, rights of citizens and the duties of the government were increased. By increasing the number of matriculates, newspapers and journals, we mean that the number of persons aware of the rights of citizens or the duties of the government increase it. This was the first reason behind the passage of the Government of India Act 1909. 
Secondly, development of extremist or militant nationalism. Because of the measures adopted by Lord Carson, like Calcutta Municipal Corporation Act, Calcutta Municipal Corporation Act, which was passed in 1899, Indian Universities Act. Indian Universities Act 1904, Delhi Darbar to proclaim, Delhi Darbar was convened to proclaim the King Edward VII as the Emperor of India. It was in 1903, culminated with the partition of Bengal. in 1905. These policies adopted by Lord Carson resulted the growth of extremist and militant nationalism in the country, especially within the fold of Indian National Congress. Calcutta Municipal Corporation Act was passed in 1899. It was it Calcutta Municipal Corporation Act was it okay, Lord Carson aimed it to bring Calcutta Municipal Corporation under the control of the government. Through the Indian Universities Act of 1904, he tried to bring universities under the control of government. Delhi Darbar of 1907. It was convened to declare King Edward VII as the Emperor of India. All this culminated with the partition of Bengal in 1905. All these resulted in the development of extreme or militant nationalism in the country. Gopalakrishna Gogale Gopalakrishna Kogali at the annual session of the Indian National Congress, session of the India annual session of the Indian National Congress, convened in 1905, expressed that India should be governed in the interest of the Indians themselves. He called for legislative reforms. At the annual session of the Indian National Congress convened at Benares in 1905, Gobala Krishna Gogale asked, expressed that the country should be governed for the interest of the Indians. He asked for legislative reforms and the appointment of Indians, appointment of the Indians in the India Council. and Viceroy's Executive Council. In the annual session of the Indian National Congress convened in 1905, Gopala Krishna Gogale expressed that India should be governed for the interest of the Indians and he emphasized that legislative reforms should be introduced in India. Indians should be appointed to the India Council. India Council was created to support the Secretary of State for India in running the administration of India. It consisted of 
15 members. India Council consisted of 15 members. It was created to help the Secretary of State for India in running the administration of the government. Gopala Krishna Gogali demanded that Indians should be appointed in the Viceroy's Executive Council. And in order to specify these moderates, some kind of constitutional reforms were to be introduced. Next reason, fourth reason, similar deputation. First October nineteen oh six, similar deputation. The prominent leaders of the Indian Muslims met Viceroy at Shimla on first October nineteen oh six and demanded that adequate representation in common surate with their population should be given to Indian Muslims on 1st October 1906 Muslims prominent leader met Viceroy at the summer capital of India at Shimla and demanded that adequate representation should be given to Indian Muslims in the legislative bodies. Viceroy saw it an opportunity to bring Muslims to the side of the British to strengthen British Dutch. In order to satisfy the moderate elements of the Indian National Congress and the Muslim allies, Government of India Act 1909 was passed. So, these were the reasons behind the passage of the Government of India Act 1909 with the, the intention of bringing the moderates to the side of the British and by bringing Muslims especially allies to the side of the Britishers through which the British administration in India could be strengthened. So, these were the reasons in order to satisfy the moderates even before the passage of the Government of India Act 1909, L. P. Singha was appointed into the Viceroy's Executive Council L. P. Singha was the first Indian to become the member of the Viceroy's Executive Council even before the passage of the Government of India Act in May 1909. In this, this time Government of India Act 1909 was passed even before the passage of the Government of India Act 1909 L. P. Singha was appointed as one of the members of the Viceroy's Executive Council. L. P. Singha was the first Indian to become the member of the Viceroy's Executive Council. These were the major reasons behind the passage of the Government of India Act. Recollecting 1 the number of matriculates, number of journals increased, thereby the number of persons aware of citizens rights and the responsibilities of the government increased. Secondly, militant nationalism began to develop mainly because of the reactionary policies of Lord Lipton. Thirdly, even the moderate came forward demanding 
radical changes in the administration. They demanded appointment of Indians in Viceroy's Executive Council, India Council and conducting of Indian administration for the best interest of the Indians. Some kinds of constitutional reforms were to be introduced to specify the moderates. With the Simla deputation, the British considered that Muslims were to be brought to the side of the British to strengthen British Raj in India. These were the reasons behind the passage of the Government of India Act. Now, we are going to analyze major provisions. What were the major provisions of the Government of India Act 1909? <coughs> 1. The number of additional members, the number of additional members increased. increased it to 60. In Imperial Estate Council, the first provision of the Government of India Act 1909 was that the number of additional members increased to 60 in the Imperial Estate Council. Hence, the total number in the Imperial Estate Council was 69. Who were the remaining 9 members? Viceroy and the members of Executive Council. members of executive council. They were the ex officio members, ex officio. The first provision was that the number of additional members in the imperial estate council was raised to 60. With this, the total number of members in the imperial estate council was raised to 69. The nine members were Viceroy and the members of Viceroy's Executive Council. They were the ex officio members, ex officio members of the Imperial Estate Council. The total number of additional members was 60. The remaining 9 members were Viceroy and members of the Viceroy's Executive Council. Out of the out of, of the 60 additional members, 60 additional members, twenty-eight nominated by the British government. Nominated by British government. The remaining thirty two were non official members. They were non official members. So, the total number of additional members was sixty. Out of the sixty members, twenty eight members were to be nominated by the British government. 32 members, the remaining 32 members were called non official members. Out of the 32 members, again 5 were nominated. Again 5 were nominated. 28 nominated official members, 5 nominated non official members. Non officials, they were called non officials. For the total number of nominated members were including 
non official nominated member and official nominated member was 33 out of the 60 members the nominated members were 33 so the nominated members enjoyed majority not the elected members nominated members enjoyed majority in the imperial legislative council so the nominated members always sided with the british government because they were nominated by the british government it was to protect british interest in the imperial legislative council now you have been told that 32 non official members 32 non official members 28 were official members thirty two non official members are told five were nominated by the British government in order to ensure majority for the British government thirteen were indirectly elected from general constituencies general constituencies six by landlords, landlords of six provinces, five by Muslims, Muslims, one Muslim landlord. Two chambers of chambers of commerce of Calcutta and Bombay. This was the division of the non official members. The total number of members was sixty nine. Nine members were the Viceroy and Viceroy's Executive Council, 60 were the additional members. Out of the 60 members, 28 were nominated by the British government, they were the official members, 32 were the non official members. Out of the 32 members, again 5 were nominated by the British government. So, the total number of nominated members was 33. It provided the necessary majority for the British government in the Imperial Estate Council. 13 from general constituencies, 6 from lands of landlords of 6 provinces, 5 were Muslims, 1 Muslim landlord, 2 chambers of commerce of Calcutta and Bombay. This was the division of the members in the Imperial Estate Council. The number of members in provincial estate councils also increased. Provincial estate councils. The number of provincial estate council was also increased. The members of the provincial estate council was the minimum number was 30 and the maximum number of members in the provincial estate council was 50. Now, we come back again to the election to Imperial Estate Council. Two types of election were introduced, direct and indirect. Two types of election, direct election and indirect election. In the Imperial Estate Council, there existed two types of election, which were the 
direct election and indirect election. The Muslim members were directly elected. In the election of Muslim members, only the Muslims enjoyed the right to vote. Separate electorate or voters list was prepared consisting the names of Muhammadans only. In the election of Muslims, only the Muslims were allowed the right to vote. They were directly elected. They were the Muslims were directly elected to the Imperial Legislative Council by the Muslims. What about the election to the general constituencies? Indirect election was introduced. The people directly elected members to local boards. Local boards or municipalities. The people elected members to local bodies and municipalities. Then the members of local bodies and municipalities elected members to provincial legislative council. Provincial legislative council. The members of the provincial legislative council elected members to imperial legislative council. The people directly elected members to local boards and municipalities and the members of the local boards and municipalities elected members to provincial legislative council and the members of the provincial legislative council elected members to imperial legislative council. This was the way through which general constituencies, members from the general constituencies were returned. whether all Indians were given the right to vote based on age? The answer is exactly no. Who did enjoy the right to vote? Right to vote. Right to vote was given only taxpayers and university graduates. The right to vote was given only to taxpayers and the university graduates. Women, even though they were taxpayer or university graduate, they were not allowed to contest the election nor right to vote. in order to contest the election. For IT to what was given only to taxpayers and university graduates, women were not given the right to what nor good contest election, even though they were university graduates or taxpayer. From the act, we come across with the fact that inadequate representation, that is more representation was given, more representation was given to Muslims. In addition to the reservation of seats for 
Muslims, that is the number of seats reserved for the Muslims was 5. In addition to these 5 reserved seats, the Muslims also would contest elections from general constituencies as well. In the 1909 election, 4 seats from the general constituencies Muslims got retained. So, the 4 seats which were open to general to which Muslims were retained. A more representation was given to Muslims. It was to bring the Muslims to the side of the British to strengthen British Raj in India. Muslims were given more representation. Another defect was that because under the introduction of the two types of election, direct election for the Muslims, indirect election for general, as the people belonging to general community could not get to the opportunity to directly elect their members, while the Muslims got Muslims got the right to directly elect their representatives, but people belonging to general communities did not get the right to directly elect, they could only indirectly elect, even though they were taxpayer or university graduate, they did not get the opportunity to directly elect their representatives. Next major changes functions what may are the major changes introduced in the functions of the imperial estate council. The members were given the right to move resolutions. the members of the imperial legislative council and the provincial legislative council were given the right to move resolutions, but these resolutions should be in the form of recommendations to the government, which was free to accept or reject it. One of the functional change introduced through the government of India act 1909 was that members were given the right to move resolutions, but it should be in the form of recommendations to the government. Recommendations to the government, which the government would accept or reject. The second change in the functions was questions and supplementary questions. The members got the right to ask questions and supplementary questions. The members were given the right to discuss the annual financial statement that is a budget, but no right to vote. These were the major changes introduced in the functions of the Imperial Estate Council. One, the members were given the right to move resolutions in the Imperial Estate Council, but 
the nature of the resolution should be recommendations to the government. The government was free to accept or reject the resolutions moved in the imperial legislature. Imperial legislature. Secondly, questions and supplementary questions could be asked. The members were given the right to ask questions and the supplementary questions. The members were given the right to discuss annual financial statement that is the budget, but they were not given the right to what on the budget. The aim of the Government of India Act 1909, as you have been told earlier, the main intention behind the passage of the Government of India Act was it to bring moderates. to the British side. There were mainly two intentions behind the passage of the Government of India Act 1909 by the British government. One of the main intentions was it to bring the moderates to the British side. As you have been told earlier, in 1905, Gobala Krishna Gogale asked the British government to appoint members to the India Council as well as to the Viceroy's Executive Council. He also demanded that India should be governed for in the best interest of the Indians. In order to satisfy the moderates represented by Gopala Krishna Gogale, this legislative reform was introduced. Indians were given representation in Viceroy's Executive Council as well as the number of members in Imperial Estate Council was raised. These measures were brought into effect in order to satisfy the moderate section of the Indian National Congress and to bring these moderate elements to the side of the British government. Now, what was the intention behind? the passage of this act, one, to bring the moderates to the side of the British. Gopala Krishna Gopala in 1905 expressed that the country should be governed for the best interest of the Indians and the Indians would be appointed in the India Council which was created for supporting the Secretary of State for India in running the administration of the government appointment of Indians in Viceroy's Executive Council and increasing participation of Indians in running the administration of the Government of India. In order to satisfy this demand, an Indian was appointed, L. P. Singha was the first Indian to be appointed in the Viceroy's Executive Council. The number of members in the Imperial Estate Council was raised. One of the main intention was to bring the moderates to the side of the British to strengthen British touch. But in reality, what happened? In 1907, Surat split the 
in 1907 with the surat split the extremists the extremists left indian national congress once the extremists left indian national congress indian national congress became very weak it was rendered incapable of challenging the british administration in india a unified action of the extremists and moderates were required to challenge the british administration in india but with the surat split the extremist left indian national congress and it rendered indian national congress weak but in 1916 the extremists returned to indian national congress at the lucknow session of the indian national congress it is popularly known as lucknow pact lucknow pact at the lucknow session of the indian national congress convened in 1916 the extremists returned back to the indian national congress however the extremists returned to indian national congress in 1916 with the lucknow pact the moderate ceased to play a vital role vital role in indian national congress what was the second intention as you have seen earlier communal electorates communal electorates was adopted through the government of india act 1909 reservation was given to the muslims by giving communal electorates to muslims the british government tried to bring the muslims to the side of the british administration in india to strengthen british raj we can recollect simla deputation of 1st october 1906 where in the prominent leaders of the muslims demanded that adequate representation in common surat with the population of the muslims they were given they were to be given reservation in legislative councils a communal more representation was given to muslims in the imperial legislative council to bring the muslims to the side of the british government but the gulf between gulf between the muslims and the british widened with the passage of government of india act 1909 there were two reasons as far as british was concerned one to rallying moderate city side of the british but the moderate ceased to play a central role in indian national congress likewise the second intention was to bring muslims to the side of the british to strengthen british touch but in practice the difference between muslims and the british only increased what were the reasons in 1911 partition of bengal was nullified partition of 
partition of Bengal was revoked. Partition of Bengal was revoked in 1911. The Lord Harding government, Lord Harding, Lord Harding government nullified or annulled or revoked the partition of Bengal. One of the reasons made by Lord Carlson during the partition of Bengal made was that it was for the educational and economic development of the Muslims, Bengal was to be divided leading to the creation of East Bengal and Assam with Dhaka as its capital. The revocation of partition of Bengal in 1911 by Lord Harding government irked the Muslim elites, it irked Muslim elites. Because Lord Carson said that it was for the educational, economic, and cultural advancement of the Muslims, Bengal was it to be partitioned. But in 1911, partition of Bengal was revoked. In the same year, the capital was shifted from Calcutta to Delhi. The capital of India was shifted from Calcutta to Delhi in 1911 it irked the Muslim allies. The second reason why the gulf between the difference between Indian Muslims and the British widened, second reason. In 1912, In 1912, Sir Syed Ahmad Khan submitted an application to the British government to start a Muslim university at Aligarh. It was rejected by the British government. It also enraged Muslims. In 1912, Sir Syed Ahmad Khan, the leader of the Muslims, submitted an application to the British government to start a Muslim university at Ali Gark, which was rejected by the British government. It also enraged the Indian Muslims. Third reason, in 1913, a platform Adjacent, adjacent to a mosque in Kanpur, mosque in Kanpur was demolished by the British government. It further enraged the Indian Muslims in 1913 on the part of a conflict between two groups, a platform adjacent to a mosque was demolished by the British administration. The mosque was located in Kanpur. It further enraged the Indian Muslims. Next, fourth reason. In Balkan Wars, Balkan Wars was from 1911 to 1913. In this Balkan Wars, 
British and Turkey on opposite sides. How did it affect Indian Muslims? Because Khalifa, the ruler of Turkey, religious leader of Indian Muslims, he was considered as the religious leader by Indian Muslims. In the Balkan Wars, waged between 1911 and 1913, British and Turkey was on opposite sides. The ruler of Turkey was Khalifa. He was considered as the religious leader by Indian Muslims. It further embittered the relationship between the Muslims and the British administration in India. Likewise, First World War. In the First World War, First World War was from 1914 to 1918. In the First World War also, Britain and Turkey was on opposite sides. As you have been told earlier, the ruler of Turkey, Khalifa, was considered as religious leader by the Indian Muslims. It aggravated the Muhammadans of the country against the British administration. But with two objectives in mind, the Britishers brought in the statute book, the Government of India Act or the Mundo Morley reforms, but the Britishers could not achieve neither of the objectives. They, the moderates, they ceased to play a pivotal role in Indian National Congress and the Gulf between Indian Muslims and the Britishers further worsened. Observation of the Act. Observation of the Act of 1909. Introduction of the communal or separate electorates for Muslims. Introduction of the communal electorates or separate electorates. How did it affect the Indians? Since the reservation was only given to Muslims, no other community was given reservation in the Imperial Estate Council or in the Provincial Estate Council through the Government of India Act. Only Muslims were given reservation in the Government of India Act through the Government of India Act 1909. When the Britishers were asked why Muslims were alone given reservation. The British government replied that by considering the grand services, grand services rendered by the Indian Muslims, reservation was given to Indian Muslims. Once reservation was given to Indian Muslims, other communities also came forward. Other communities also came forward demanding reservation. The most prominent of which was Sikh community, Sikh community from Punjab. The reservation through the Government of India Act 1909 was given only to the Muslims. Once the Muslims were given reservation through the Government of India Act 1909, 
Other communities also came forward that they were also to be given reservation. They are on the pretext that they also rendered grand services to the British administration. Now, other questions. Who was the first Indian appointed in the Viceroy's Executive Council? What were the circumstances circumstances behind the passage of behind the passage of Government of India Act? Nineteen oh nine. Examine the major provisions. Examine the major provisions of the Government of India Act. Fourth question, what were the intentions, what were the intentions behind the passage of the Government of India Act? These are the expected answer. Thank you for watching my lecture. Thank you.